Welcome back to the Beyond Defeat. I'm Kez. On this episode, we're going to take an in depth tech look at the Mizuna Wave Horizon 4. Who's the shoe for? So, if you are that heavy pronator, mildly pronate, this worked great for yourself. This has changed quite a lot compared to the Horizon 3, but we'll get into that at the end of this video. High stability system on that inside, so if you do have that flexible foot, mildly or severely pronate, this just does accommodate for that and makes the gait cycle a bit more straighter. Starting with the outsole, this has changed quite a bit compared to the three. Just updated the flex screws, so on that forefoot on your medial side, not a whole lot of flex screws, just detached rubber. So it just stops from prone on that forefoot and just keeps your gait cycle straight. Quite a few different flex screws, so you got your two noticeable ones in your forefoot, so it's front of your back of your forefoot and of your toe off. So with that stability shoe, just it's reasonably flexible, but since you do have a flexible foot, if you are wearing this shoe, much flexibility comes from your foot. Using that high abrasion rubber at the back half of the shoe, makes for a durable outsole. You're probably looking at about that 800, 900 Ks out of this shoe. High mileage, high stability, high cushioning shoe. Massive change is to that midsole. So they are using a Euphoric and a Euphoric X here, coupled nicely uh, with their technology going into the stability system, just to make for that soft ride underneath the foot. And with this, they do use that high energy return cushioning system, the X-Pop. So it's just a full length X-Pop running underneath the whole foot. And with the X-Pop, it is slightly a bit different in the sky. So the sky, since it is a neutral runner, is just straight and flat. With the X-Pop in this, it is just uh, angled. So there's more on the lateral side of the foot than it just does taper off to the medial side. So they just have changed the medial side of the wave foam. So it does offer that stability, unlike the sky, which is a bit more of a wave. These are more of that box shapes, uh, so I think they call it ESS resin. So they just have changed the angles of it just to slow down that rate of pronation for those mild or severely pronating runners. That runs throughout the whole forefoot, coupled with that uh, forefoot not having that flex groove there, you're just not gonna pronate or just slows down the rate of pronation. Moving on to the upper, so this has changed quite a bit as well. A lot of 3D print going on, coupled with a different lacing system, just to offer a good lockdown over that midfoot area. Still that double jacquard mesh that have doled in nicely. This does fit a bit truer to size, whereas the Horizon 3 just did feel a bit short, a bit too tapered, very breathable, no irritation over the whole midfoot. They are running with a half booty fit, does stop halfway through your midfoot, so you're not gonna get that tongue slipping down to that lateral side. They don't have a lace loop on it, but yeah, with that booty fit, it's just not gonna move that much. So with your lacing system, they have dropped that second lace loop, coupled with the 3D print running over the midfoot. That just locks in nice, quite nicely. Quite a shallow overall fit, uh, since yeah, most people with that medium or low arch end up usually having that low instep. Nice heel counter, locks in well. Not a whole lot of padding over this compared to the Sky, but there is, yeah, it's very comfortable and just a plush overall fit. Mizuno with most of their shoes do have quite a plush inner sole, so I'm pretty sure it's an eight mil. It's kind of a EVA and PU mix. With that 10 mil drop, it goes up kind of against your Kano having that 10 mil, and then your Adrenaline does have a 12 mil. High cushion shoe, high stability shoe, and you probably expect that, yeah, 800, 900 Ks out of it. So comparisons between the Horizon 4 and the Horizon 3. Quite a few updates between these two models, so we'll get into it. Firstly, with the outsole, quite a lot has changed, but that's probably just because the midsole has changed as well. Similar kind of thing that was going on with your medial side on your forefoot, just joining that rubber together so you don't wear through that part as quick if you are that forefoot pronator. Similar flex screws on that forefoot side, and uh, then they just have added a lot more rubber at the back half of the shoe since they have added cushioning on the midsole. So moving on to the midsole, we're basically massive change to this shoe. So they have removed that uh, thermoplastic wave plate and just added a lot more cushioning underneath that heel. Especially on that initial strike, having that 10 mil offset, this just didn't have that much cushioning underneath that heel at all. So adding that X-pop as well as euphoric underneath your foot, a lot better landing zone. Plus it's just gonna make for a softer shoe overall. Different stability system, so removing that wave plate and moving to the, that wave foam. It's not as aggressive as the stability system, so, but it does still work. If you want that kind of high stability shoe, you may end up having to go to like to that Kayano. This still does support the foot very nicely, just not as aggressive as, as digging up in that back half of the arch. This just does off that nice stability system the whole way through your gait cycle. Moving on to the uppers, they have taken out a lot of bulk. Uh, from the Horizon 3. So this just had a lot of stitching, a lot of overlays, 
and I just removed that toe cap. Pretty sure it's internal now. All this 3D stuff, aero hug going on over the upper of the foot just adds quite a lot of weight to it, so they just eliminated that. Done a bit more 3D printing, not a whole lot of sewing going on in that. Just makes it for a better overall fit. Dropping that lace loop down so it does hug around that midfoot a bit better. Definitely moving in the right place for Mizuno look, coming into their 2020 range. I personally think it's better going away from that wave plate. They may end up losing some of the customers that love that, but I think it was just a bit too much of an aggressive stability system, plus it just didn't have a whole lot of cushioning and quite a firm plate underneath your foot. Moving to that wave foam, I prefer the stability, plus it's a lot more cushioned underneath the foot. If you have any questions about either of these shoes, let us know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button, like button, all that YouTube stuff. And we do have a Strava club as well as an Instagram page, so get on board those. Links will be in the description for them. And we'll see you in another video.